Welcome. My name is Josh Almeida, and I am very excited to bring to you our latest installment of Focus on Learning, brought to you by New Bedford Public Schools and New Bedford Cable Network. While the best way to find out what your child could be doing at home is to work directly with your child's teacher in school, we know these videos will help everyone keep learning active at home. Good morning, I'm Ms. Abushanab. I'm a first grade teacher of Akarni Academy, and today I'm going to be doing a phonics lex lesson based on the program that we use at Carney called Foundations. I am going to read the objective of the lesson, and then I'm going to do a couple of examples and show the parents a game that they can do at home at the end of the lesson. So for today, we are going to learn about ED, a suffix that has ED at the end, and ING at the end. And I'm going to explain what a suffix is. A suffix is an ending that can be added to a base word. Before I go on to the lesson, I'm going to review what diagraphs and blends are, because a lot of my students already had this, and I believe some of the first grade uh, teachers in New Bedford that are doing the program will uh, also have d done this in the past. So diagraphs are two letters that make one sound. An example of a diagraph could be ch, like chin, wh, that says w, like whistle, sh, that says sh, like ship, th, that says th, like thumb, CK that says suck, k, like suck. We also go into review what consonant blends are. There are two or more consonants, but they each make their own sound, such as black, flip, and step. So we're going to start by writing words that have a suffix ed and i n. G. We're going to find out where the base word is and we're going to mark the words according to foundations. We're going to start with the word rent. And we're going to add the suffix ed. And before we read the word, I'm going to explain what the suffix ed does at the end of a base word. The suffix ed and the suffix ing is used in an action word and it will change the meaning of the word. So if I write the word rain, here I have the word rented. The base word will be rent. The suffix will be the ed, ed, and the word is rented. The word rented has a short sound. It has the consonant blend nt, and the ending ed at the end. We can take the word rent again, but this time we're going to write the suffix ing. And when you write ing, the suffix ing at the end of the word for rent, it means it's happening right now. So here is the base word rent. Here is the suffix ing. Short sound, it's a closed syllable. Here is the base word rent, ing, and the word is renting. We're going to be marking more words, and I'm going to show you what some of my first graders do when they see words that they think is difficult to read. So I'm going to write the word drinking. A lot of my first graders will look at this word and will freeze. They will be afraid to read it because it looks like a very long word. However, I always tell them, let's try to see what we know and we're, trying, we're gonna try to figure out how to decode that word by using everything we learned and everything we know about the word. So I teach the children to tell me everything they know about a word. In this case, we'll use the word drinking. My students will tell me that they see a blend, a consonant blend, dr. They will tell me they see the e, the i sound that says e. They will point out they see the ing at the end of the word, 
and I put a box because it's a glue sound, but it's also a suffix. They will tell me that they see a consonant blend also at the end, and then they will decode the word by going drinking. It's easier for them to break this word into small pieces to figure out how to read the word. This is a closed syllable word, and that's how they will mark this word if they know how to do foundations. A lot of students in the New Bedford Public Schools don't have this phonetic approach, but they use other phonic approaches that are similar. The next word we're going to do is the word twist. Okay, that will be the base word, twist. If I want to write twisted in the past, I'm going to add ed, that's the suffix. My students will box the suffix, will point out where the base word is, twist. They will put a little brief on top to show that it's the short I sound that says it. They will show where the consonant blends are, and they do this to help them out how to read a word that they're not familiar with. So here you have twisted, the base word is twist. The next word we're going to write is blending. Now if my kids were in the classroom, they will have whiteboards and they will be writing these words as I say it. Um, they will be able to tell me that the word blending has the suffix ing at the end. They will underline the consonant blend bl and nt. They will put a little brief on top to show the short east at uh, e. They will point out where the base word is and it's a closed syllable word. Blending. I will also have my students write sentences with suffix ed and ing to see if they can tell which one is the past and which one is the present, what's happening right now. So I will have a simple sentence as he is jumping on the bed. I will tell my students, please find the word that has a suffix. They will point at the word jumping. They will break the word apart by boxing the end at the end to show the suffix. They will show the word, the base word jump. And they will understand that jumping with ing shows that it's an action word that is happening now. I will tell them to take the word jumping and show me the past tense. And they will write he jumped on the bed. By now they should be able to tell me that ed is the suffix, the base word is jump, and it's an action word that shows the past tense. So, the way that you can use this lesson with your child at home is when they read a book, you can play a game with them where they can write out or point out the words that are past with ed or present with ing to show the suffix at the end of the word. I have a little game that I made that I wanted to show you, something very simple that you can try at home with your child. So I basically wrote base word, suffix, and then what the new word is. So we started with the word drift, we added ed, and the word changed to drift, past tense. We did the word print, we added ed, and the word is printed. We added the word blend, with ed, ed, blended. We did the same thing with the suffix ing, we did the base word drift, we added ing, and the word is drifting. We did the word print, we added ing, 
and the word is printing. We added the word blend with ing and the word is blending. You can also do it different. You can have the word written with a suffix at the end where your child will have to identify the base word and the suffix at the end. We did drifted, the base word is drift, and then ed at the end, that's the suffix. Printed, the base word is print, and the suffix ed at the end. Blending, the base word is blend, and ing is the suffix at the end of the word. This is an easy game that can be played at home. You can do them with, um, when they write sentences, when they're reading a book, and so on. Another thing that I wanted to explain is the ED sound at the end of the word, the suffix ED sound at the end of the word. Now, I'm from Spain and I came here when I was 12 years old. I could already read in Spanish, so I had to learn how to read English. These are things that I wish I knew when I was learning how to read English. All these little tricks, all these little rules, it would have helped me out a lot. I only learned about the sound ED at the end of the word, the suffix ED having three different sounds when I started teaching first grade. So, the first sound for ED sounds like ed, like the word wanted, waited, seated, counted, melted. The second sound for um, ED at the end of a word sounds like d, like the word played, filled, drilled, watched, and touched. The last sound for ED at the end of a word is t, like the word looked, cooked, tucked, helped, finished. You will see a lot of children in first grade, especially children that are English language learners, when they see ED at the end of the word, they will read it like this. Talk, they will say talk at it or walk at it because they don't realize that the ED has more than one sound. I will challenge you to play a game with your child at home where you will have them, or you actually can do this with them, write a base word and add the ED at the end and try to figure out if the word with ED has the ed sound, d sound, or the t sound. Uh, the reason why it's important to know the parts of a word like a suffix at the end of the word is so the children that are learning how to read will be able to identify the real word, the base word, and then figure out that the ending ing and ed is just a suffix that will change the meaning of the word. It makes reading a little easier for them because they have something to, um, to play with. They have a rule that they can follow. They know that a word like drinking or drill or counted, they know that they, there is a base word there. And all they have to do is just figure out the ending of the word to be able how to read this word. Um, I hope you guys enjoy this video. I apologize if I went a little too fast. Uh, I miss my first graders at Kearney Academy. I hope you're all safe. And I wanted to give uh, the New Bedford Public School teachers and Dr. Uh, Mr. Anderson and Ms. Treadup, um, thank you and for everything that you've been doing for our schools.